is going on everyone, it is me, Mr. Mario, and yes, you are looking at the parts I'm going to be using for this tutorial. This has been asked for a long time, and I finally got another Slim to mess around with, which was a Trinity motherboard. So, I will be giving you all a tutorial on how to flash a Winbond light on 16D4S. Now first off there are two drives. There is the MXIC drive and there is the Winbond drive. Now you might be asking me, Mr. Mario, they're both the same thing. They're both light on 16D4S drives. Uh, what are you talking about? It's not like it says it on here. Well first off, you need to look right here. It's going to say model DG16D4S. If you have any other model drive, this tutorial is not for you. Uh, a good way of identifying this, first off, without opening up your Xbox 360, you need to look at the back of the console. And if it has been manufactured anywhere, I want to say any time before August, uh, August 2011, that's it, then you can flash it. Uh, if it has a light on drive. Now another way of looking at it, when you're looking at the top of the system, you're going to see a sticker like this right here, a circular sticker. This is the emergency eject. If it is yellow, it is a light on drive. And if it has been manufactured before August of 2011, it will be a 16D4S. If it is not, you will have either a Hitachi 0500 or a Hitachi 0502 drive, which again, this tutorial does not cover. One way you could also check it out is I don't have the drive powered right now, but when you open it up inside here, the drive tray is completely, uh, just completely smooth. On a Hitachi, it has a little niche right here. But those are the two ways to identify it. Now, when you have your console open, there are two types of chipsets. There's the MXIC chipset, and I'm going to show a picture in the corner. There's an MXIC chipset and a Winbond chipset. The Winbond chipset is harder to do. I have done an MXIC successfully, but the Winbond is harder to do. If I get another MXIC drive, I will show that on camera. However, first time I did it, I didn't show it on camera. But this one I do have, and it is a Winbond. This is the harder exploit to do of the two but it's manageable and I'm going to show you how to do it. So what you want to do is once you identify what you have, these are the tools you're going to need. Now, not necessarily need, these are the ones I use and I'm going to explain why I use them. Now, first off, to actually power the drive, right here I use the Executor CK3 Lite. I use this just because it makes it a lot easier to do. Now, if you have a 4 Molex adapter available, uh, you could have one either within your desktop computer if you're flashing with a desktop, or if you just don't have one, you don't have a spare one, or you're using a laptop, you could use a wall adapter for that. Uh, so I use this to power my drive, and a lot of people ask, Mario, can't you just use your Xbox to power your drive? Well, you can, but I'm going to say with these drives, you have to power them on and off during the flashing process at least three or four times. And uh, just look at the Slim right here. I have my Slim taken apart, and as you can see on the Slim, they barely gave you any room. So trust me, th this will just get really annoying if you're using only your Slim, and uh, I really don't recommend it. Now, if you have by chance, if you have a spare fat Xbox, you could use that. Don't use it to actually play your games or anything, but you could use it as a power source if you have a spare one and you're wanting to cheap out. Now again, as I said, you can use the slim console if you want, but I really don't recommend it. I really don't recommend it. But with that, we'll go ahead and move on. Now, second, right here, I use the X360 USB Pro, which is essentially a SATA to USB adapter. Now, again, you might be asking yourselves, Mario, can't I just use one of these cheap adapters that I get off eBay or Amazon? The answer is no, you cannot do it. Don't get me to explain it, it's just, it's not going to work. Apparently, I've looked online, there's some people that have said it will work, but it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't waste my time with it. Uh, that's why I use this. Also, my motherboard on my desktop is just horrible with flashing. So that's why I end up picking up this thing. Now, this is really useful if you have a laptop of sorts, but if you have a desktop computer, you must hook up your DVD drive to your master SATA port or your SATA zero port. All right? 
you have to hook it up there. If you have a prefabricated computer, 99% of the time it is where your hard drive was hooked up. If not, it is just going to be the SATA 0 or the Master SATA ports. But for this, I'm using the X360 USB Pro. So, you could use these tools if you want. I flash several drives, but if you want to cheap out, again, as I said, you could just hook it up to your computer straight through the desktop, and you could use an Xbox as power. The Xbox as power, if it's a slim, I really don't recommend it, but for these drives, using a SATA is not that bad. Using a SATA port, just make sure you have a long enough SATA cord for this exploit. Now, for the exploit itself, this does require drilling since it is a wind bond. So you really can't pick this up anymore. Uh, I am going to have a link down below in the description where it will show you what pins to mark off and everything. But I was able to pick up the Kamikaze template 2.4. It is by Maximus. And uh, I use this and it's great. Um, there's some people that say it's a bit controversial. Some people don't like it. Honestly, I haven't had an issue with it. So I have that. And then I have this little hand drill right here that I could just screw everything in by hand. And it has a one millimeter drill bit on here. Now, a 0.8 millimeter drill bit is recommended. However, I have not had any issues with a one millimeter drill bit. So these are the tools I used. If you don't have either of those, you could count the pins, which I recommend using a ruler and a magnifying glass and a pencil of some kind. But you could also use an X-Acto knife if you have one. Or, I'm not going to picture it here because I really don't want to get it. But if you want to use a soldering iron with a small enough tip, you could do that as well. Anyways, I will admit right here, I do have a previous video that I used on flashing every Xbox 360 fat drive, and there's a section on there which explains how to set up Jungle Flasher for your computer. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and cut that in, and then we're going to get to actually setting up everything on your computer and then flashing over your drive. I'm not going to re-record that section just due to the fact that honestly nothing has changed. As long as you have all the firmware and you have your software set up properly, you should be ready to flash. So let's go ahead, go over to our computer and set up Jungle Flasher for the first time if you haven't done that yet. All right, everyone, so this is what you're going to need to do. So first off, now that we have all the hardware underway, we're going to want to get the software underway. So first, you want to come over here to jungleflasher.net, and you want to come over to downloads, and we're going to be downloading Jungle Flasher. This is the best program that you can use for flashing, honestly. But right now, the latest build is 0 0.1.94 beta 320. You're going to just want to download that, and you should be good to go. Next, we need the firmware because Jungle Flasher does not come combined with any firmware. So I'm going to have all the download links for these down below. Just check the links in the description. But we're going to want Light Touch 3 right here. So you're going to want to just pull it off here. Next, we're also going to want Light Touch 3 for Hitachi drives if you're doing that. And finally, if you're on Windows 7 or a 64-bit operating system, I'm currently using Windows 7 64-bit Professional. You're going to want to use Driver Signature Enforcement Overrider if you are doing it through direct motherboard hookups. If you're using the X360 USB Pro like I am, you will not need this. So now that you have everything downloaded, I'm going to show you all what to do. All right, so first off, right here, I have all these downloaded. So we're going to want to go ahead, extract our RAR file for Jungle Flasher, and just extract everything. So extract Light Touch 3 for Hitachi, and then extract Latest Eye Extreme. Now what you want to do is you want to come over to Latest Eye Extreme, go into Firmware right here, and grab everything. And I'm just going to completely cut it and move it out, and then go over to Jungle Flasher, firmware and place it in there as it says place firmware here. Next, you want to do the same thing with your Hitachi firmware. So you want to come over here, grab everything, so just cut it, and then go back to Jungle Flasher, firmware, and paste it in there. So now you should have every variant of the firmware on hand and you should be good to go. Second, you want to come over to libusb, copy over this DLL file, this is all in Jungle Flasher, and paste it in the root right next to jungleflasher.exe. Second, you want to do the same thing with Portio. You're going to have Portio 32 and Portio 64. You want to copy both of these and paste them out here. These are going to be also if you are doing the direct motherboard hookup, as I said. Once you have all of these, you should be able to run Jungle Flasher like so, and you should be good to go. Now, sometimes it takes a little bit to come on, but right here, 
Um, it's giving me this error because I haven't disabled my uh, driver signature enforcement overrider or I haven't enabled it, whatever you want to call it. But I'm using USB for this, so this is irrelevant for me. So I really don't care too much, okay? Yeah, it likes to bring up some errors sometimes. That's because I have nothing hooked up right now on my computer. But as you can see, this is going to be Jungle Flash right here. I will show you all how to use everything, but you should be good to go on this. If it runs, you should be okay. Now, there's going to be two things I need to mention. I'll just exit out of there. Number one, if you're flashing your Xbox right now, go ahead and update your system update to the latest console update available, um, or at least something higher, like something in the uh, 15,000 series. Right now, um, the way you can check is you can just go into your system settings, and you could check from there and see what kernel version you're running. But at the moment, right now, May 18th, when I'm recording this, the latest kernel available is 16.203. So you want to update to something like that, and you should be good to go, because at one point, Microsoft ended up reflashing a bunch of drives and they did a whole mess of things with the firmware so just go ahead and be on my level with this and we'll be okay second before we start this up if you are using 64-bit OS this is what you want to do you want to download this program as I said driver signature enforcement overrider uh, version 1.3 B and you want to double click this exe run it and I'm not going to do it here just because I really don't need it but right here you want to hit next you want to hit yes, and then you want to hit enable test mode. And then from here, you're going to hit next. And from that, you want to restart your computer. And when you restart your computer in the corners, it's going to say that Windows 7 is running in test mode, and it might take a bit longer to boot up out of BIOS. However, if it says that you're in test mode, that means that you're able to flash a drive through Windows 7 64-bit native, and you should be good to go. All right, now when you open up Jungle Flasher, you want to just go ahead, cycle it, and make sure that your drive is being recognized. Once it's being recognized like now, just go ahead, hit Slim Key in the DVD Key 32 tab, and say no to unlock. It. We only want to get our DVD key off there. I am going to say that this right here is the most important part and the easiest part of the process. If you screw up at any time after this and you have your DVD key on hand, you can just resume this tutorial with another drive board. However, if you screw up your drive board somehow and you do not have your key on hand, then you will have to reset glitch your system in order to get the DVD key, or you're just going to have a fancy DVD player. But anyways, aside from that, just make sure your DVD key is backed up. This process will take some time, but let's go ahead and wait. Now, once it brings up your key.bin, you are going to want to save that and all the files somewhere important. Make sure they are saved somewhere where you will remember where they are. I would prefer somewhere such as Dropbox or another safe place. When this message comes up, just go ahead and say yes to auto flashing light touch. Now, right now, you just have a slim key extract. We are going to extract the actual firmware, but for now, go ahead and save this custom firmware to the file. I'm just going to call it custom firmware flash. Now here's where you might want to relax and take a deep breath. We're about to actually flash our drive and do the dangerous part. What you want to do is go to MTK Flash 32, power cycle everything so you make sure it's working and your DVD key is verified. And what you want to do is hit intro slash device ID. But make sure that when you're doing this, if you're using a newer version of Jungle Flasher, make sure where it says at the bottom, fat, slim, or slim 2, you have slim checked in the radio button. Now if this comes up, you want to go ahead hit yes, and you want to power cycle your drive. If you're using a CK3, you just power the drive on and off. If you're using a Xbox's power, you have to unplug and replug the power real quick into the drive. Now once you have your drive into vendor mode, that should be easy enough. Next, we're going to actually focus on unlocking our drive. When you have slim checked, you want to go ahead and press 0x8c. And right here, you're going to end up hitting yes. And from here on out, you have to actually go in and drill your drive. Now right here, once you hit yes, you're going to start constantly sending over a message that will keep checking to see if your drive has been unlocked or not. You do want to pay attention to what's going on in Jungle Flasher and take your time. However, if you have sound enabled on your computer and you have a set of speakers, turn them up a little bit and you're going to hear a chime once you hit the right point on your drive. 
As soon as you hear that chime, you want to back off and stop drilling. I'm going to go ahead and show you all the footage right here and speed it up at some part since it's pretty tedious. But if it takes you 10, 20, even 30 minutes, don't worry about it. We want to get this right the first time. All right, everyone. Well, here it is. This is the terrifying part. Now that you have your unlock command being sent to your drive, what I did right here is I had my Maximus set up. What you want to do is just find the mark. I'm using a Maximus. What you might want to do is use the picture I'm going to show to find out what lines you need to drill and find the mark that intersects on everything. Now, what you're supposed to do with Maximus is just make that mark like what I did. And from there on, you could just freehand it. But I kind of did a mix of both while I was doing this drive. There were most of the time I was just doing it without anything and I was just freehanding my drill. The other times I did have the template on there. You want to make sure that everything is clean while you're drilling. So keep blowing on it, keep taking breaks, and you just want to make sure you're going real slow. Now what I did was just I just did a jump cut because I was literally drilling this for about 10 minutes. But near the end what I did I just put the template back on there and started drilling at it. Now what you want to do is you just want to wait, and this is near the end, but you just want to wait and you want to listen for this beep sound. I'm going to cut out the audio and go ahead and play this. This is what you want to be listening to. Did you all hear that sigh of relief? Yeah, that was a relief that I was actually able to drill it properly. Now if you go back to your computer, your status should be showing up as 0x00. That's exactly what we want. From here on out, all you have to do is power cycle your drive a few times. Everything else is going to be on the computer. So let's just go back to Jungle Flasher with your now unlocked drive. Now if you look at Jungle Flasher, congratulations, your SPI status should be 0x00. What you want to do when you have that is you want to hit read and read over your original firmware while it is still unlocked and in vendor mode. This is going to allow you to have the actual original firmware on hand in case anything goes wrong along with the DVD key. Now, this might take some time. It does take a bit of time because this process is slow, but just let it sit there. It looks like Jungle Flasher is frozen, but I promise you it's not. Now we're going to be greeted with this familiar message again with the vendor intro failed. Don't worry about this. Just hit yes and power cycle your drive again. From here on out, it should continue with its process. Now right here, you should get your original firmware. What you want to do is save that, hit yes on this message again to auto load, and we're going to go ahead and save this a second time. I'm just going to save over my original custom firmware that I made, but there's not really a big deal with that. Just go ahead, hit yes, and save that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually write over the custom firmware to our drive, which will in turn flash it, which is what we want to do. What you need to do is hit intro slash device ID. Now I know you might be thinking we did this already, but do it again. Hit yes on that message, power cycle your drive, and you should go back into vendor mode, this time with an unlocked drive. Now all you need to do is hit the right button with your firmware loaded, and it's going to flash over a custom firmware to your drive. Again, this process will take a little bit, so just go ahead and wait.
now that everything's been written okay, congratulations, your drive is flashed, but we still have a few more steps to go. What we need to do is relock your drive. So again, hit intro and hit yes right here and power cycle your drive. I know you're probably tired of this by now, but trust me, it's going to all work out in the end. Now what you need to do is go ahead, hit that button that I just hit. With this warning, go ahead and hit OK to SPI lock your drive, and it should go from status 0x00 to 0x8C. If you have that, you have successfully relocked your drive. You do have to do this if you want to go on Xbox Live or if you just want a flashed console. If you have a single NAND exploited reset glitch system, you shouldn't have an issue. But what you want to do is hit outro, and what I do is hit outro twice. So go ahead, outro the drive twice to make sure it is fully relocked. After that, you have a relocked, exploited, Winbon hacked drive. Congratulations! After some work, you've already flashed your drive. For those of you that still might be nervous with the procedure, after watching most, if not all, of this tutorial, let me let you in on a little secret. This is actually my first time flashing over a Winbon drive. Yes, you heard that correctly. Before this video, I had never done a Winbon unlock, but this was my first ever unlock, and I did it on video, which made it even more tense. Now, yes, I was nervous, and at one point, I thought I screwed up on a huge level. I ended up thinking the drill bit actually went back into my hand drill, and I thought that I'd accidentally drilled through the PCB. But aside from that, it didn't happen. It was my own mistake. Everything was good to go. So, again, as I said, it looks very intimidating, and trust me, it is, but once you actually do it, and I feel like if you see it done through this video, your confidence level will go up a little bit. Now, this does take time, this does take patience, but you will feel really good, and you will breathe a huge sigh of relief the first time you ever do this successfully. Anyways, hope this gets you all sorted. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you for watching, everyone.